Hey, this is the Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today we're gonna go vlogger style. Ah, so sometimes people ask why I don't do like a vlogger style type of thing. I mean somebody, when I said I was gonna start doing daily videos, I, I realized that somebody on Snapchat in Draggy suggested maybe I could just take the camera around with me the way I used to with Snapchat and just film things as I go. But the fact is my life isn't that interesting. You know, I'm 44 years old, I'm so nearly 45, right? I don't have a skateboard, you know, I'm just sort of, you know, a lot of times it's in this office, a lot of times it's talking to clients who probably don't want to be filmed, you know, and that kind of stuff. But today's gonna to be a little bit different. So today, today I've been, well, a few months ago I was invited to teach a, like a day at the Uni Oxford University summer school. Like it was Oxford Royal Academy uh, thing. They have like an iPhone developer course and they wanted to have somebody who was an industry person. They, they really phrased it well, but I don't think it's really that as, as grand as, as I think, or as I thought at the time because it seemed to be very disorganized. So they asked for somebody who knew a little bit more about how the apps, app markets work and all that kind of stuff. Somebody who actually lives in it rather than just the development side. So I thought, yeah, sure, we, I could do something like that. Go, come in for a day and talk to, talk to the students and everything. So I sent through a syllabus, uh, you know, which of everything I planned on covering, and I didn't hear anything back. I mean, for you know, for months, and then it was like on my calendar for this week. And so finally, yesterday, I'm saying, is this thing still on? They go, oh yeah, no, we're expecting you tomorrow, right? So, so like at 8:30 at the school. So right now it's 6:30. I stop in the office. I got to do a few little errands, but then I'm gonna go in and. Hopefully all that goes well. So I'm gonna drive, so I drove into town, just stopped in the office for like an hour tops, and then I'm gonna head into Oxford through the morning traffic and all that kind of stuff I try to avoid and, uh, you know, and head to the school. So, and I plan on taking you guys with me, so I hope you don't mind. If, you, if you're bored with this, just go ahead and skip till tomorrow. We'll talk about something really cool like, all right, no budget marketing. We'll talk about that tomorrow, okay? All right, so that's it. Okay, so there's two things I have I do every day. So to, usually my routine my routine's messed up today because I'm going into the to Oxford, right? But usually I'll, I'll go do some sort of exercise in the morning. I come in at four, four thirty, five at the latest, and do all that kind of stuff. But because I have to be at the school at eight thirty, kind of like I have a job, then I have to leave a lot earlier. So it's uh, what is it time? Six forty-five now. Right? But there's two things I always do every day or I try not to miss unless absolutely necessary. The first one is this video that I'm doing right now. The second one is writing a letter to my son in the army. So, you know, I've, since he's been gone, I've been writing every day, trying to, you know, making a habit of it. Even though, you know, if you write every day, it's going to be really, really boring. Right? But, you know, basic training is a difficult time. I can remember what it was like being in basic training. And, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, so I send him a letter. By the way, after a, nearly a month, I've gotten zero replies, no replies. But I continue to mail every day because I'm the dad and that's what dads do, right? And then also, so also here I got my, my syllabus for today. So basically what I did, my syllabus I proposed to them, and whether or not we stick to this, I don't know, was to talk about stuff after the app development side. So they've been learning like Swift and all this kind of stuff. Swift and Xcode and everything iPhone development. So they have very much an iPhone, uh, the, the teacher of the course, very much an iPhone guy, right? Not so much a, an app store guy. So I'll cover more stuff like, uh, uh, you know, discoverability, monetization, you know, proper ASO techniques using keywords, stuff like that. The different types of monetization, you know, that we've talked about here, you know, many times before. And also just talk about life as a software developer, you know, what it's like finding a job, working as a permanent employee, working as self-employed, working as a contractor, all that kind of stuff. So I'm hoping they find it interesting, but it's apparently the, the class is really small. It's only like four people. So anyway, we'll, we'll see how this goes. Wait, anyway, gotta get going.
Now to be completely honest with you, wearing the suit is probably being a bit overdressed, but I wasn't really sure of the dress code. Like whenever in doubt, I always go for the suit. The suit is so much easier to, you know, you could always take off the tie, you could always take off the jacket, you could always blend in a little bit more. When you go in in jeans, you're, you're committed completely to jeans. So every business meeting I go to, I wear a suit. This, because it's a school, no idea. I would, you know, I could wear a tweed jacket and with patches on the shoulders, which, you know, which at my age, I have one of those, but. Okay, so I was told to be here like at 8.30, right, where everything's gonna start at nine. I would talk to somebody who gave me loose instructions on, okay, go over to this room, the students will show up at nine o'clock, and pretty much left me on my own, but I had to stop and say, is there a toilet? She said, oh, you have to go through the secure door, and uh, you know, I need to get her to let me in and out. Kinda like if you've ever worked in a corporate environment, right, and you, like the first few days, they go, oh, you're not gonna get your security pass for a few days. Right, so just let me know when you have to go to the loo or anything and I'll, I'll let you through. And then you have to ask somebody to let you in and out of the, of the bathroom like, like a little boy. Oh, that's kind of what this is like today. So already I've had to do that. Now I might not film this. I, I haven't decided if I'm going to film it. I asked permission before, but like nobody seems to know what anybody else is doing. So because it's kids, I mean they're not young kids, they're like teenagers. Because of that, and because I'm just gonna be winging it, I probably won't record anything like I was planning on doing. But you know, I'll give you a synopsis of all this stuff, all the stuff I'm gonna talk about over the next few days on the daily videos and stuff like that. Anyway, it's a really nice room. It's a really nice room, you know, it's all very wooden, it's all very old, it's all very classical, but you know, I mean, it's so much different than Central Missouri State University where I went to. So anyway, I'll. I'll try to film a little bit throughout the day, otherwise I'll fill you guys in at the end is how it goes, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Also, since I'm going to be the only grown-up here, the suit, the suit is overkill. So, you know. Alright, so it's gone pretty well so far. I didn't want to film any of the class because there's only a few students and it might be kind of awkward. So right now it's lunchtime. They're out at lunch and I've got like another 20 minutes before they come back. But I want to talk to you guys about something that was a bit interesting. One of the tasks that I'd come up with today was to take an app that they've been working on with their class during the week and see how we could market it and make it into a product. Right? And what, what they had said was uh, one of the apps they did was just a simple flashlight. So it was a button uh, and when they click the button it turns the flashlight on. Right? So I thought, well let's have a look at that. Right? They said, well there's already so many flashlight apps out there and there's already a, a flashlight as part of the iPhone now so you know, why do we, you know, there's nothing there. So I just want to walk you through this. So if you have a look at my screen here, you know, before anybody comes back. So you can see here's the, uh, here's the iTunes app store. All right. Uh, so if I do do a search for flashlight, you know, sure enough, there are tons of flashlights. They all look the same. They're all the same kind of, you know, stuff, right? You've got the same similar looking icon, everything like this. So how can we market something that's different and what kind of things are actually marketed differently? Some sort of bang outside. Right, so as we start looking at different things, we go through different apps, you know, starting at the top, going back, and they're all variations on a different thing. They have different bits of functionality, a little bit. A lot of them have the same functionality. It's either like strobe light or, you know, or link to music, or sometimes I have something else in there like a compass. It's pretty much the same thing. They're all feature driven, right? And so I started asking, so what I said, what I had said was, and this is what I would say to anybody. Let's have a look, instead of looking at the features of the product, instead of looking at you know, what the app can do that's different than everything else, let's look at the audience first. Let's find the audience and then find the product, right? So what's, you know, what kind of audience would be different for these apps? Sure, there's, like, there's flashlight apps for everybody, right? But I want you to have a look at this one down here, which I thought was really good. Color flashlight for children, right? So flashlight for children. You have a, a child maybe using a flashlight app is too much, maybe something with some different colors. Maybe you have a kid that's afraid of the dark, right, and what gets up in the night. Maybe you want to produce a flashlight 
app for them. That's not what this thing is, by the way. It doesn't look like. It's not your typical flashlight app using the, um, the flash on the back, right? But let's say you're a, let's say you're a mechanic. And this is just an idea. I don't know if this will work or not, but you know, rather than look at something in terms of the features of the application, let's look at something where we look at the audience first. Let's say I'm a mechanic and I need to crawl into, or a builder, and I need to crawl into tight spaces and I need to use my phone to see different things, right? I could use like a normal flashlight, which would be fine, but maybe I need to have different bits of information nearby. Maybe I need to take a, a picture of something as, I, as I'm looking at it. You know, maybe I need to have different measurements. Maybe I need to have some schematics in front of me, that kind of thing. So if I was a mechanic and I was looking for a flashlight app and I see one that comes up, say flashlight for mechanics, wouldn't I be more likely to download that one, right? I know it's a smaller market, it's more niche, right? But you're not serving what it is, right? You're serving the audience itself. It's just a different way of looking at things. I thought the uh, flashlight for kids, although that's not what that app is, I think that's, a, I think that's one of the great ideas. I, I told you before about my biggest app, EarSpy. Let's go back to this over here. So we've talked before about about Ear Spy, now called Ear Agent, right? This spy app, but I've also released that same one, exactly the same, called Ear Assist. So Ear Assist is the same application with different colors and a different audience, right? So this one does, it does okay. It doesn't do as well as Ear Spy, but it has a smaller niche audience. So if somebody's looking for a hearing aid, they're gonna find this. This is the same concept in both places, but it serves two different audiences, right? So. When you look at different types of applications, and this is just a little part in the middle of this vlog episode, which I, I started thinking about it. I thought, you know, this is something that you might want to think about, right? Rather than focus on the features of your application, can you focus on a different audience? It's like if you have features of the application that are used everywhere, how can you make that different for a different group of people? Like I say, you know, I always say we do language learning apps because I think language learning, language learners who are really passionate about learning that language are gonna be more likely to download a language app. They're gonna be more likely to search that out than just search for a generic, just a game, right? I think like golf fans, like if you ever known like somebody who's really into golf, they talk about golf all the time, right? So if you had flashlight for golfers, I, I don't know how that would be different. I don't know how, what value you could add, but that might be a way to start with, right? So just an idea. Anyway, I don't think I'm gonna film any more the rest of the day, but I might uh, film a little bit more today. So I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. This guy should be back here soon. So anyway, bye. Okay, so I'm on the park and ride on the way back to the car. Everything went pretty well. In the afternoon session, we ended up fleshing that idea a bit more and doing a little bit more with that, you know, coming up with different in-app purchases and stuff like that. All in all, it was actually kind of fun. It's, it's fun to put together an app and stuff like that and think about who your target market is, how we're going to stand out from the other apps, you know, how we're going to start off with keywords as opposed to just build something and try to work it in afterwards and, uh, and put together a product, not so much the coding part because they're, they've been doing that for the last, for the entire course. So we focus more on doing, you know, that, the, the part that I really like to do, the, the marketing, the ASO, you know, putting everything together. So all in all, a good day. I'll be back again tomorrow with something a little bit less all over the place from the office. Anyway, that's it for today. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.